Africa is a continent rich with opportunity. And when business and communities come together, its astonishing potential begins to be felt. With the Sustainable Development Goals steering these partnerships, Africa's future is being rewritten with innovation, foresight, and inclusivity. Crossing the length and breadth of the continent, our journalists uncover these stories and share them with the world. Join us now for remarkable stories of partnerships across Africa, building the future and changing lives. It's Africa's time. Farming is the lifeblood of Tanzania. More than two-thirds of its population live off the land, relying on their yields to provide for their families. But things are not what they could be, and many challenges remain. I'm visiting the country's Morogoro rice-producing region to meet local farmers and agri-experts to find out firsthand what can be done to unlock the vast potential of land and life in this magnificent country. Peter Assi is a local agronomist working with farmers to improve practices, preserve the environment and help transform lives. So this rice is grown here? Yes, this rice is grown here because most of the villagers here, they are growing rice. About 90% of the people living in Morogoro are farmers. Yeah, so most of their, their income depends on the agricultural sector. Common crops grown is rice, and most of the area they grow rice by irrigation. And also we have maize, sweet potatoes, sugar cane. These are the major crops. This is a very huge plate of food. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so are we also going to eat it with our hands then? Yes. Make a little bowl, yeah. get some vegetables, some vegetables in there. Mmm. It's good. Yeah. Mm. I was born in the farm in Moshi, Kilimanjaro region, where we grow a lot of coffee. We are farmers. And from there, I said it would be better if I go for agricultural training so that I can help my villagers and my country as a whole to improve their production. After qualifying as a horticulturalist, Peter joined Yara one of the world's largest producers of mineral fertilizers. His grassroots engagement with farmers forms part of a bigger initiative to minimize rural poverty and transform agriculture. Peter works with small-scale and commercial growers like Onesmo Ishumi. The land is the mother of human beings. That's where we get everything. That's why I love it. Actually, we Tanzania some years back, we didn't divide your brain because it was plenty. You can clear the bush today and you use it for two years. And if it is depleted, it moves to another place. So there was deforestation. But now, because of investors, a lot of land has been taken. So farmers now, they are putting more value on the land to maintain it and to see to it that it keeps on giving them the harvest as they used to have. At what stage is the rice crop at the moment? The stage of, of, of my crop is in about three weeks now. With less land available, yields need to intensify. If they don't, Tanzania will need to clear 9 million hectares for maize alone to feed its growing population. The Climate Smart response is to maximize yields responsibly using modern farming techniques. Nowadays, because the demand of fertilizer in Tanzania has been so great, some of the companies, they are coming just to sell, but they are not investing into training. But Yara has done quite a tremendous work as far as training is concerned. They put up a demonstration plot so that the farmers can see and learn by doing. But I'm sure the people in this area have been farming for many years, so how are they taking to these new forms of farming? Because of the production, the, the yield was very low. Previous day, we have less than five bags. But since we came in, and after going through the trainings, they are now going up to 30 to 40 bags per acre. Farming has contributed substantially to the livelihood of my family. Most of the farmers, they are having problems of acquiring inputs. 
That's why we established a small shop for selling agricultural inputs. And actually, my wife, she's staying in town and she's running that shop. While stores like the Ishumis are important, larger scale investments in agri infrastructure are essential. Yaro's establishment of a fertilizer terminal at Dar es Salaam port is one example, making sure of a steady supply of fertilizer to farmers and helping the entire sector grow. As part of really promoting public private partnership in agriculture, the private sector took an initiative in collaboration with the government to come up with the, what they call Southern Agriculture Growth Corridor of Tanzania, SAGOT. And this, this initiative mainly really to focus on investments in agriculture and how to bring the smallholder farmers into the value chain. It's a win-win situation. The farmers will increase their production. The uh, companies will sell more of their products to the farmers. The government will be assured of food security in the country. And the farmers will have more money to spend. But still more had to be done. And a unique partnership between the private sector, academia, and the farmers themselves was formed. Yara, Syngenta, Tanzania Sokoina University of Agriculture and the Norwegian University of Life Sciences launched the Environment and Climate Compatible Agriculture Project to test and prove that intensification of farming can occur alongside environmental sustainability. The aim of this Environment and Climate Compatible Agriculture project was to apply good agricultural practice in an environment where the agricultural productivity is generally still very low. Using state-of-the-art science and also inputs, fertilizers for instance, and to compare the impact the farmers practice have on the environment versus our improved practice. If you intensify productivity, do we affect the environment? Our results showed that it is possible to increase the yield from the same area that we are cultivating now up to even 2050, instead of expanding the area cultivated and therefore saving the forests, saving the, the water sources, and therefore improving the, our environment. Soil scientist Eva Mtengeti was part of the ECCAG team working to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, improve biodiversity and ensure the longevity of the land. This soil has got very good physical properties, but actually this soil has low chemical fertility. So in order to produce good crop, you need it to fertilize. But if that cannot be told by just looking at the soil, we have to sample the soil taking them to the laboratory for analysis. Then we decided which fertilizer to be used and at what rate. How did you go about transmitting the knowledge that you'd found here from your research to the farmers? Farmers are not ignorant. They know quite a lot about soil. They noticed that they have problem, but they didn't know how to correct the problem because they have been used fertilizer, but they are wrong. So after soil analysis, we came up with the correct correction. Really, in farmers, they wanted things which they can see. So after seeing what the other has improved, then the farmer copied and asked the question. And then we had a chance to introduce the best practices. Maize farmer Frederick Kaduma worked with ECCAG researchers and agronomists and has increased his production significantly. <laughs> With nine demonstration plots in two regions, the mindset of farmers is changing harvest by harvest. Scaling the ECCAG project across Tanzania and Africa is an exciting and logical next step. We go to the village and we introduce ourselves to the community and telling them what our plan is for their better life. Sometimes we get resistance. We will just find few farmers in that area who are willing to cooperate with us in the new technology. Mr. Upole was among the farmers who accepted our new technology. So we selected his farm to be used as a demonstration plot. So Mr. Upole started to follow up what we are doing and he also practiced on his farm and eventually other farmers also joined Mr. Opole in the 
acceptance of the technology. And you can see there, that one is our lady farmer. Okay. Upole, njo. Habari. I'm coming in. So, I'll hold your hand. <laughs> okay. So what are we going to be doing? I don't want to kill any of these uh, rice plants. This is a weed as well? Yes, it it's looks like a beautiful. Mr. Opole is a lot quicker than I am. I think I'm really good at throwing it out. Yeah. <laughs> These are the seedlings they are going for transplanting. You can see the straight lines with good spacing from one plant to another. So this is the way we are teaching the farmers to plant like this one, rather than broadcasting directly to the field in order to get more yield. Na katika shule zangu za kilimo nimebahatika kuwepo na mke mmoja na watoto wanne. Watoto wa kike watatu wa kiume mmoja. Ambaye imeniwezesha mimi maisha yangu kubadilika kwa muda mfupi kuwepo na ambaye nasomesha watoto na napata kipato cha chakula ndani kwangu. Na kingine ni kubadilisha mazingira ya nyumba yangu kama unavyoiona, kama unavyoona mafundi wanaendelea kufanya kazi lakini kutokana na kipato kuongezeka. Hawa wazazi wangu wote walikuwa ni wakulima. Alizi ni rasilimali kwetu sisi kwa maana Tanzania haina yeyote. Na kuitunza ni kuiangalia katika mazingira isialibiwe. Kwa hiyo tunasema kwamba alizi ni rasilimali kwa familia na hata kwa taifa. It's Africa's time. Ayara? Uruko mini Musa Kaladima. Batimo walo mode, kinto malo sisku. Moishishe ishe malu. Mo wani odu me wangbana. For generations, Fulani herders have reared their cattle in this beautiful land. This is the lush expanse of Fasola in Nigeria's Oyo state where we've come to witness the convergence of modernity and traditional practice, and how an entire landscape is being changed, a subsistence is being replaced with opportunity through a unique dairy development program. My name is Lawrence Owe Negwenuse. And my role is to develop the local dairy industry in Nigeria. For Fusan Campina, DDP is dairy development. And the idea is to engage the local farmers to supply raw milk to our facility in Lagos. It's hard to believe, but to date, Nigeria has been importing most of its dairy raw materials. Now an entire homegrown industry is being built with farmers such as Musa Galadima. With his increased income, he's now bought a motorbike and needs to get to the Dairy Development Program's milk collection center by 9 a.m. sharp to make his money for the day. We 
we have these farmers uh, that are Fulanese. They are traditionally cow owners. They are traditionally cow herders. They have some experience in how to manage cows. The essence of the program is training farmers to produce better quality milk and higher yields. It takes place under the trees next to the collection center. What I've seen that made me happy is that when we started, the Fulani milk producers are at the low level of production. Then the quality was very bad. Through series of training and uh, development, we brought them to the level they are now. For instance, Musa can boast of having quality milk that is far better than what they had some years back, and they have more quantity of milk to deliver. And that means more money to them. I think the challenge with milk is to make sure you provide good quality product, because milk is a perishable commodity, uh, and the quality can deteriorate very rapidly. And this is where our 140 years of experience as a parent company comes in, to provide the right technology, the right training, the right breeds, the right facilities for farmers to make sure that from the grass to the glass, that quality is maintained throughout. The milk is cooled and tested at a local bulking center before it travels the 200 kilometer journey to Lagos in a refrigerated tanker. Just a few years ago, this type of infrastructure was unheard of in these regions. Okay, Lisa, this is a uh, Priestland Campina Wamco, Nigerian PLC, where we produce all products. And if you look at that, you can see this is a fresh milk tank. This is where the milk has been discharged, after which we we'll take it in. You hear the noise? So things are really happening. So let's go in. We employ over 2,000 people directly and approximately 30,000 people indirectly. We're the market leader in dairy. We've been operating in the country for 60 years. And at this facility, we produce almost all of Nigeria's requirements in dairy, which is essentially evaporated milk, milk powder, and flavored milk powder in all sorts of pack sizes and flavors. Almost all dairy raw materials are imported. But based on the drive of the government, based on our need to have a sustainable production and marketing outfit in Nigeria, we needed to go into the development. And the target for us was to achieve about 10% local sourcing in five, six years. Now we are doing about less than 3%, which means we still have a long way to go, but it's possible. Dairy farming is not something that happens overnight. You need to start small, you need to build it day by day. So it's been four years that we've been working with uh, various partners, both the government as well as other private sector organizations. The Campina Wanko, producing the milk, we are marketers of dairy products. We now have the government supporting us in infrastructure development, and we now have two scale helping the farmers to mobilize their building capacities and ensuring that they're able to supply what we want. What we want is quality milk that can meet the demand at the right price. Two-scale project is partnership with DDP to support farmers in crossbreeding, testing control, training, and organizing farmers in and around the milk collection centers. For a company like Crescent Campina, to come down to buy milk from a farmer that supply five liter, two liter, three liter. This is enormous, this is fantastic. So their competitive business strategy is working. So if a team won't call, Mishaka, Mishaka, Kun, Ohuntu won't call, 
I'm a veterinary surgeon. I make sure that the animals are in good health. I consult to the farmers, advise them on the best practices. I can't do it, Manda. I want to go to the farm. I'm going 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 to go to the During the dry season, they usually have very, very low volume because the food is not available. Because of that, we provided solar power bowl for them, for the cows to get water. Then we train them also in feed supplementation. They also learn about pasture development. We also support them in improving their yield, their breed of cows. Okay. What of the issue of crossbreeding? Insemination, how far, how far have they gone with you? Yes. We are the local cows here, yeah, they give about one liter of milk per day, which is grossly insufficient and not efficient. But what we know that it's possible that we have in other countries to get cows that give 30 to 40 liters per day. So for us to be productive and have the right price quality level, we need to support them in bringing them across their, their bridge to move them to a level where they are able to give us between 8 to 10 liters minimum. What I love about Musa is that he, he easily accepts what we came with. He's an enterprising young man. We want to encourage young dairy farmers into dairy farming. We want to develop local sustainable farming. And we've done this now in several countries across the world, and Nigeria is actually no exception. In fact, I think Nigeria probably offers one of the biggest opportunities, because with a population of over 180 million mouths to feed, I think there is a, a great need to develop uh, agricultural self-sufficiency. great visiting Oyo State to see the way in which a manufacturer is partnering to develop the lives and the businesses of its local small-scale farmer suppliers, providing Nigeria with quality dairy nutrition through markets like these in Lagos and other outlets. It's about sustainability, it's about inclusivity for the benefit of everybody. <laughs> Kesi bubu wala ni bike ni si emega gamuni tite mi frara ame timu lo timu si njai mi bosi wumi. The job puts smiles in my face when I see people that don't have means of livelihood and now they are living better lives. Each day I see their life is being affected in a positive way. It's beautiful to see Musa and many other people uh, really get the benefits of this inclusive growth. It's about providing the elements to nurture the business and not necessarily spoon feeding or hand holding. When that happens, we are faced with a situation of more inclusive, sustainable growth. We are looking at changing people's lives at the very basic level. And we're looking at the whole concept of transformation of economies. They have more money, they are building new houses, life has changed. So it has been so impactful that now we have a surge in the people that want to join DDP. Now we have about 900 farmers. Our plan, however, is to go to 3,000 in the next two, three years. I think Africa is rich in natural resources, in human resources, and I think the opportunity is for organizations like ours, other private sector organizations, in partnership with the public sector, to provide the facilities to unlock that potential and make Africa what it is truly capable of. So, Lori, So, Dada, que se